Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hello, <clears throat> good afternoon. Uh, so we'll start the um, we'll start the launching event now. And thank you for participating online. And also thank you for participating here, uh, coming to the ME office. And now I will briefly introduce the agenda of the event. So today we have. Um, we have participants from international guests and Mongolian uh, Mongolian guests here as well, who are participating online as well. So today's agenda is we uh, I'll introduce the agenda briefly. Uh, after that, we will, we will have an uh, Evolve Mongolia chapter introduction presentation, which will be presented by our uh, Evolve Mongolia chapter founders and. Uh, co-leaders who are also MEA members. MEA is the Mongolian Evolution Association. And we, we will have uh, video greetings from international community of evaluators. After that, we will have an inspirational speech from MEA board members. And uh, it uh, each will present the linkage of MEA and the Youth Mongolia chapter in a presentation. After that, we'll have a Q&A, which is an open discussion. And then we'll have a closing remarks. So I'd like to uh, welcome on the floor our colleagues, Mr. Sogot Dengendarch and Ms. Sogot Tsukontukdarch for their presentation about values Mongolia chapter. Yeah. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. My name is Orte Vinoch. I am the co-founder and co-leader of the Values Mongolian chapter. And uh, today I'm going to talk about the story of the Values Mongolia. And uh, this presentation has uh, two parts. The first part will focus mainly on the story, which will be presented by me. And the second part is uh, about the future plans and our upcoming activities, which will be presented by Ms. Lohansu. Okay, so to look back on, the starting point of uh, Evaluate Mongolia was a uh, world evaluation case competition. Okay. And it was followed by a small grants project. And uh, this is when we understood the importance of uh, establishing Evaluate Mongolia chapter. And that finally led to the birth of Evaluate Mongolia. So as, you, as some of you may already know, World Evaluation Case Competition is a team competition, 
So in order to participate, I had to first form a team. However, that turned out to be a much bigger challenge than I initially expected because whenever I approached a person and student to participate, they were kind of intimidated and um, reluctant to participate, mainly because they had no idea what evaluation really is. So I only had to turn to Mongolian Evaluation Association. And uh, thankfully, Ms. Chimge connected me to wonderful young youngsters, like-minded youngsters. And uh, with their help, I managed finally managed to form a team. Unfortunately, one of them really couldn't participate due to emergency. emergency. And uh, we proceeded with four members with uh, two wonderful coaches. Okay. And the, the result was simply shocking because we didn't really expect to be that successful. And uh, the fun thing is that uh, we really had next to no experience in the field of evaluation. We were just interested in it. And um, you know, becoming the Asian champion really motivated us to take the field of evaluation more seriously and um, go deeper into that path. And um, we understood that uh, um, organizing such event in Mongolia should be the next stop because it not only ignited the competitive nature and spirit of, uh, of the students and also helped us to more popularize the field of evaluation among the youths as well. So with that in mind, I proposed that idea for a small grants project. And one of my co-worker, <laughs> co-founder, Lorna, proposed a different idea as well, which is to ensure the accessibility and availability of resources to freelancers and whoever interested in evaluation. That's enough. Okay. That's wonderful. That's okay, can you see it now? Thanks. Okay. 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 Okay, this morning, you want to have Recording in progress. It's moving. Hey, okay. is it now? So has a slide moving? Yes, yes, yes. So where were we at? Or we in this one? What is this next? Okay. Oh. 
Okay, so. Make sure it's my view. Due to technical issues, we have to start from the beginning. Okay, so the starting point of uh, Values Mongolia was World Evaluation Case Competition, which is followed by Small Grants Project. This is when we understood the importance of uh, Values establishing National Values Chapter, and that led to the birth of Values Mongolia. And uh, yeah, the, in order to participate in uh, the World Evaluation Case Competition, I first needed to form a team. Okay, so I first needed to form a team. Unfortunately, it was um, quite difficult for me because whenever I approached students, they were kind of reluctant and um, intimidated because they simply didn't know anything about the evaluation. So I turned to Mongolian Evaluation Association, and uh, Ms. Bittenchman found me really reliable members. And with their help, I finally managed to form my team and uh, participated successfully, which was quite unexpected. And uh, the first thing was that it motivated us to take the field of evaluation seriously. And uh, the second thing was that we realized that establishing, maybe organizing the same event in Mongolia should be our next stop because it not only ignited the competitive nature and spirits among the youngsters, but it also helped popularize the field of evaluation among the youths as well. And, uh, So, okay, so with that in mind, I propose the idea of organizing National Evaluation Case Olympiad, which is similar to World Evaluation Case Competition. And uh, my colleague, uh, Owen Stick, also proposed an idea of ensuring the accessibility and availability of the resources to freelancers and whoever interested in evaluation. So with those two main activities, we applied for small grant project for YA East. And uh, in the process of doing so, Okay, we understood that establishing a national value chapter is super duper important. It provides us opportunity to broaden the network with international YEs and it will enable us to have more engagement with the youth in Mongolia. So we kind of realized that it, establishing a national value chapter is uh, equivalent to opening a new door to us. And uh, in this slide, I want to talk about, I want to share my thoughts on MEA. It's, I consider myself and uh, the other co-founders and co-leaders of Value Mongolia to be like a piece of puzzle scattered around. And uh, in this case, Mongolian Evaluation Association played a vital role in connecting us. And for example, these learning sessions done by our co-founders and co-leaders, it actually provides us opportunity to learn from each other. And uh, with this, we finally able to connect with each other, 
and uh, met each other. So <clears throat> with this help, we finally united and uh, assembled to jointly establish the value of Mongolia chapter five. And, uh, thank you for the introduction. For the next presented by Ms. Olsen. Hey, uh, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning all. And um, um, I want to say sorry that we had some technical problems. And if, it, if it's taken you longer than expected, we will make sure that we will finish it on time. And so now I'm going to um, introduce about our like planet plans. We are going to take uh, action in the next years. So. Let's start. Um, okay, so in 2023, we are going to uh, start our uh, initiation and our chapter's activity with the Evalu Mongolia Evaluation Week in Mongolia. Um, actually, we last November, our team uh, applied to the Evaluate Youth and Evaluation Global um, Week, I, and we actually we um, we successfully uh, uh, selected for the Youth and Evaluation Week, and we are going to uh, implement four types of activities during the evaluation Youth and Evaluation Week. And the first one is um, Evaluation Bootcamp. Uh, during the uh, Youth and Evaluation Week, we are going to start the launch of national first uh, Olympic Olympiads in Mongolia. And uh, uh, we start register our competitors and then we are going to implement the uh, summer bootcamp in, in summer in Mongolia. So also uh, on, the, on this activity, we're going to have uh, our international partner from American University. They will join us and share their experiences and improve our capacity. Yeah, and so the second one uh, is that we are going to implement an awareness raising activities, uh, which is focused for the universities in Mongolia. We are planning to um, organize a living library activity and visit the one of the uh, one of the three large universities in Mongolia and introduce our value chapter MEA and um, introduce our uh, National Olympiad of Evaluation. So we are expecting for this activity, it can build um, awareness version and also like strengthen their knowledge about evaluation in Mongolia. And the third activity that we planned is a manifesto and standard signing event. And actually the manifesto and the standard has been established last year during the um, uh, global, ev global evaluation activity. And as of now, there are over 500 organizations and individuals are joined and signed this manifesto. This is, um, its main goal is to enhance and to um, improve the meaningful participation in youth in evaluation. So we are going to implement this in Mongolia and introduce this manifesto and standards to um, uh, international organizations, government organizations, and other potential partners in Mongolia. So actually we have, uh, at the moment, we have planned 30, 32 um, partners. So uh, in person and maybe virtually we meet them and uh, in, invite them to join us by signing the manifesto and the standard. And then uh, the last activity that we are going to implement during this Youth in Evaluation Week is capacity building activities. Uh, in, in collaboration with the American University, we are going to uh, conduct a three-day training for our YAE members. And uh, our planned topics for these uh, trainings are mainly related to um, career and evaluation, 
and thus a main um, basic understanding of ME, etc. So uh, this will be the first kind of um, accessible and evaluation training for young and emerging evaluators in Mongolia, like that we are bringing the international partners and also our board members of MEA will conduct the training. And apart from this Youth in Evaluation Week, we, are go, uh, we have uh, some other activities in our mind. For example, of course, we would hope that we will going to have more youth members in our uh, chapters and broaden our network in Mongolia with other youth organizations. And also we are planning that um, more youths will be uh, participated and engaged in the future global competitions. And also we are going to plan or actually support one of our, at least one of our youth members like to get a scholarship and they attending the trainings by IPTED in 2013. And also we have a plan to cooperate with other youth organizations such as Derek Foundation Yeah, and um, by this slide, we can see that our main uh, key, key areas of activities are divided into two separate groups, which is uh, uh, one is the like improving the engagement and one is increasing the awareness. So by improving the engagement and knowledge and skills, we are planning to have um, some knowledge building activities as well as um, experience and know-how sharing activities. By knowledge building activities, we are going to participate our um, other international network and chapters groups, conferences and academic meetings. And also we are planning to have uh, at least one or two of uh, our members attending international trainings. And by experience sharing activities, we plan to have open discussions and invite another uh, experts and organizations and it, in Mongolia and from international partners. So this will help us to um, broaden our network and also like can build our capacity and increase by, by increasing the awareness activities, we are targeting for two main groups. Uh, one is of course the youths and the other one is the organizations in Mongolia. And they, by youths, we are focusing the students, young professionals in Mongolia and there's new graduates. The organizations can include, um, of course, it will include the government's organizations and decision makers, and also programs and projects being implemented in Mongolia by international donors, and also international organizations that conduct programs and projects, whatever in Mongolia, and there's a private sector, also our focus to collaborate and the final one is evaluation educational institutions. So here is uh, our main planet areas for the future. Yeah, <laughs> and thank you for your attention and for your time. Thank you, Sora and Bora, for your information uh, presentations. Now, for example, I would like to move on to the video greetings from the international community of evaluators. The first greeting uh, is from the Dr. Michael and Ms. Herman. So we'd like to share the video uh, greetings from the international partners. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, Dr. Michael can. Uh, Dr. Michael Quinn Patton is the past president of American Evaluation Association, founder of Utilization Focus uh, Evaluation, Principles Focused Evaluation, and Mar Blue Marble Evaluation. Uh, Ms. Chairman Temple Patton is a director of uh, organizational learning and evaluation. Uh, utilization and focus evaluation and blue model evaluation. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and uh, Dr. Michael, uh, he has authored numerous books on evaluation, including Blue Marble Evaluation, uh, principal, uh, principal Focused Evaluation, Facilitating Evaluation, and Developmental Evaluation, and Utilization Focused Evaluations. Um, okay, let's see the video greetings from the international. We can't hear anything. Sounds good. Uh, So I think perhaps from the settings, you can choose like share sound uh, as well. So I think that's usually helpful when you do the videos. No Zoom control there, no share there, no share sound, no share. He just has share computer sound which better. The tight man is no microphone only. What he doesn't say such a thing. Is this the whole tour? No, think in your time.
the microphone on mute to get to it. Today from Minnesota, where we have an abundance of cattails, as you'll see behind me. And I'm joining you from Minnesota, but with a global perspective as part of the Blue Marble Evaluation Network. And one of the key pieces of work that we have been doing through Blue Marble Evaluation is looking at the importance of intergenerational evaluation. And Michael is my father and my mentor and has been doing evaluation for over 50 years and brings deep historical knowledge and deep understanding of what's been done and how things have worked and has provided me a foundation from which to build. But as a relatively newer evaluation, evaluator to the field, um, I feel like I've been able to contribute many new perspectives, a deep commitment to social justice, and I welcome more new and emerging evaluators who really have so much to contribute, new perspectives, new ideas, and it's important to balance those with what we've done before as a field and understand where we've come in order to think about where we can go together. And so we're really excited to welcome you young and emerging evaluators to the profession and to our global network. We wanna congratulate you and look forward to collaborating with you and supporting you on your journey. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Michael and uh, Ms. Chairman. Our next video greetings is from uh, Dr. David Fitterman. Uh, Dr. and Professor David Fitterman <clears throat> is a president and CEO of Fitterman uh, and Associates an international evaluation consulting firm. He is a past president of American Evaluation Association. Uh, he has worked in over 17 countries, working in townships in South Africa and Native American reservation, as well as in high-tech firms in Silicon Valley, including Google and Hewlett Packard. Peterman has 25 years of experience at Stanford University, serving as a School of Education, education faculty member School of Medicine Director of Evaluation uh, and Senior Member of Stanford Administration. Peterman uh, concurrently, concurrently serves as a faculty member of Pacific, Pacifica Graduate Institute and uh, Claremont Graduate University. Uh, Peterman is the founder of Empowerment Evaluation and published 17 books, including Collaborative, Participatory, and Empowerment Evaluation, uh, Stakeholder Involvement Approaches. Now, please, uh, let's see the video graphics from Dr. Peterman. I'm Dr. David Fetterman, president of Fetterman and Associates, an international evaluation firm. I'm also the past president of the American Evaluation Association and the founder of Empowerment Evaluation. I'd like to welcome everyone to the launch of the Eval Youth Mongolia chapter. Uh, we as Empowerment Evaluators really, eval really value our youth doing evaluation. In fact, we have a chapter in this book, Empowerment Evaluation, of fourth and fifth graders doing empowerment evaluation very effectively in their schools to make them more inviting, more receptive. Uh, it's wonderful to see youth engaged in evaluation and to see how harmful their impact can be because of their insights into how the world works from their perspective. I think all of us as evaluators can continue to make a contribution, a large scale contribution to society as long as we broaden our perspective about what evaluation is and what it can do 
to meet the needs of people throughout the world, including examples like helping to eliminate tuberculosis in India, fighting for food justice here in the United States, having a racial equity lens. There's so much that we have done and can continue to do to make the world a better place. Look forward to seeing you later in the conference. You take care and best wishes. Thank you, Dr. David Fitterman. Now we'll, uh, let's see the video greetings from the Dr. Beverly Peters. Dr. Beverly Peters is a program director, measurement and evaluation at American University in US. And she is a specialist in the use of qualitative methods for monitoring and evaluation, writes a blog on qualitative methods for m &E, and it's a regular contribution on this topic for the American Evaluation Association 365 series. She has more than 25 years of experience teaching, conducting research and managing and evaluating projects in Africa, and is a member of American Evaluation Association's Professional Development Working Group. Congratulations to Eval Youth. Mongolia, as you launch. Congratulations to Eval Youth Mongolia as you launch your organization. My name is Dr. Beverly Peters, and I am the director of American University's Measurement and Evaluation Program. Although American University is based in Washington, DC, we are an entirely online program with students from all over the United States and all over the world. I met representatives of the Mongolian Evaluation Association at the American Evaluation Association meeting in New Orleans last year. Learning about your launch, I became very excited for you. And as I look at the founding youth, I see one of the strengths of your organization in your diversity of experiences. I am drawn to the quote from one of your founding members. Evaluation allows us to listen to different voices. This speaks to our work in the measurement and evaluation program. We also center culturally responsive, equitable evaluation in our curriculum. And your centering this will support your success as an organization and your vision to make the world a better place. I support your vision of bringing together youth to learn about evaluation. And I look forward to speaking to the group and to support your learning in the coming months and years. Again, congratulations on your launch. Your hard work has really paid off. I look forward to learning about your successes in the future. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the video greetings from our international community of evaluators. Now we would like to also welcome our international uh, partners who are joining online right now uh, from Eval Youth Global Network and Eval Youth Asia. So please welcome uh, Ms. Tamara Kabish Ribalka, who is a secretariat from uh, at Eval Youth Global Network, Leadership Circle, member of Eval Youth. Uh, Europe and Central Asia. 
Miss Tamara. Yeah, hi, colleagues. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers uh, for the opportunity to join today. It's a great pleasure for me to be here. A uh, new national chapter launch is always a pleasure for Evil Youth, as it's a sign of the growth of the network. Opportunity for us to reach more young and emerging evaluators and help open up spaces for them, as uh, it is the case in Mongolia. Uh, we hope that in the coming years, we can strengthen this network even further. In uh, 2015, 23 young and emerging evaluators started this network, and now we have eight regional chapters and more than 20 national chapters. We in Evil Youth understand the prime role of capacity development, high quality, and uh, professional evaluations to achieve the sustainable development goals. In this sense, we look to promote that YEs become technically sound professionals uh, who are prepared for the challenges the future brings, especially now that we have seen many challenges emerging during the COVID-19 pandemics. This trend is now new. In recent times, many calls from the government UN agencies have been making calls for a greater attention for youth issues as youth inclusion, participation, and empowerment. However, Youth are still often rarely included in the decision-making processes. Uh, youth participation in programs and policies that affect their lives is uh, limited. When young people are included, they're only seen as beneficiaries of such pro programs rather than uh, right holders or decision makers. Uh, for example, until recently, almost all known and the reputable evaluation capacity building and training programs uh, many of them targeting young evaluation professionals were delivered by senior evaluators with little to no input from the younger generators of evaluators. Uh, this scenario, as you see and experience, has changed in the evaluation field during the last few years. Uh, nowadays, YEs are active members of WOPIS, and some WOPIS have been working towards the inclusion of YEs as part of their board. Participation of youth in evaluation is a call for social justice, uh, to work on the most pressing issues for humanity as climate change and the global goals. We, youth, are eager to make a transformational change, to build back better, to assure a stable and prosperous life for everyone. We want to make uh, the SDGs come alive everywhere, and we understand the potential of evaluation in achieving these goals. We want to achieve real transformations in our profession, and we know we can do it working intergenerational, breaking silos. And in this sense, uh, it's a great achievement and a big challenge to keep working together as a global network, a big and growing community of years. Hope this brings opportunities for all years in the country, that space is open for everyone to achieve transformation. And uh, now I can, uh, I have nothing else to tell, but congratulations, he is from Mongolia. We look forward to working in advancing influential evaluation and to reach more ease to become sound professionals. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you, Tamara. Uh, despite the huge time zone difference, joining online and uh, telling us uh, and a very uh, important message. Now we'd like to welcome the uh, Values Asia team, uh, Ms. Hasiti Samara Singh and Dorothy Maya Alviento, who are co-leaders of Values Asia. Hi, can you hear me? Okay. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Dorothy May Alviento. I'm a co-leader at Evil Youth Asia based in the Philippines. I'm joined today by my co-leader, Hasiti Samara Senghe from Sri Lanka. And thank you so much for inviting us to the launching of Evil Youth Mongolia. Um, what we wanted to say is that um, young and emerging evaluators play a critical role in the evaluation ecosystem. We hold varied roles in a wide array of organizations to support and lead evaluations. But we often hear people say that we, YEs, are the next generation evaluation professionals and future leaders in the evaluation field. But I think that's not 
uh, entirely true because YEEs are not just the leaders of the future evaluation system. I see many YEEs who are leaders and change makers in the evaluation field here and now leading evaluation initiatives to help strengthen the evaluation systems and structures and contribute towards transformational change at the national, regional, and global levels. Aside from the challenges mentioned by Tamara earlier, aspiring evaluators here in our region in the Asia Pacific are also still challenged with barriers to advance their career in evaluation, including limited academic or training opportunities to develop knowledge and skills to become competent evaluators. There's also the challenge of limited opportunities and platforms to engage and collaborate with other YEs and senior evaluators. And um, I, I think um, Tamara also mentioned this earlier, under representation of YEs in VOPES, um, these not only prevent us from building the necessary skills and expertise uh, to help meet the demand for high quality evaluations, which are really needed, but it also threatens the sustainability of the field. This is a reality that I know so well because it was something that I experienced myself when I was starting a career in evaluation. And thankfully, um, I found the Eval Youth Global Network at that time and was fortunate to be part of the pilot run of the Eval Youth Global Mentoring Program for YEs. And that experience uh, became a huge pivot point in my career in evaluation and also made me think about how I could support YEs who are also experiencing the same challenges um, that I experienced. And this has led me to become a part of the Eval Youth Asia. Hasidi, over to you. Thank you, Meg. So if I start uh, to uh, Evaluate Asia, Evaluate Asia was established in 2019 as a regional chapter of Evaluate Global Network to primarily serve as a platform to promote youth involvement in evaluation and to create, uh, to capacitate and empower YEs across Asia Pacific. Since its establishment, we have conducted various capacity building uh, activities for YAs, partnering up with many national, regional, and global level organizations. We are also working closely with YAs at national level, supporting the establishment of national evaluative chapters in the region. With you, we now have 11 ch country chapters in the region. And to this day, like new chapters are still being created in other countries, so we have a further reach out of evaluation initiatives to move YAs in the region. And we are delighted to have Evaluated Mongolia uh, join our growing network of country, country chapters, providing the needed platform to promote uh, youth involvement in evaluation and supporting the capacity building and empowerment of YAs in Mongolia. We hope that Evaluate Mongolia will become the voice of all the YAs in Mongolia without any boundaries. And we hope that you will become change makers who bring positive changes to the field of evaluation by unifying all the YAs in the country and connecting them to the region as well as the global. And congratulations for achieving this very important milestone. This is just the start but we are excited to see how you will inspire, engage, and empower YEs in your country and beyond. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, our colleagues from Eval Youth Global Network and Eval Youth Asia team. Thank you very much for joining online as well. Now let's move on to our uh, next agenda. Uh, for the agenda, I would like to welcome Dr. Ganzorek Konchuksomza. Uh, Dr. Ganzorek is the MEA board member, associate professor uh, at the Department of Agricultural and Applied Economics at the School of Economics and Business of Mongolian University of Life, Life Sciences. Dr. Ganzorek will share his inspirational speech. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. So um 
uh, I prepared the speech in Mongolian language. And if it needs to be talked in English, I can do that. But I just quickly use the Google translation by now. <laughs> and then let's see how, how correctly they translate. I just edited some of the text. So, um, but still I want to say these words in Mongolian because uh, it's more meaningful in Mongolian. And after that, I will do in English, okay? Is it okay for you guys? It's especially for the youth, okay? So, um, uh, Okay, so I'll talk in Mongolian first and then English. Okay. Нийгмийн бухимдал нэмэгдэж байгаа нь нийгмийн асуудал нэмэгдсэндээ биш харин бидний ухаан санаа эрүүлж асуудлыг эргэн харж алдаагаа олж харах засах дүгнэх эрүүл ухаан нэмэгдсэнийх гэж бодож байна. Залуучууд бид төрөлх их орон эхлэхийнхээ алдааг засах энх тайван ёсор тун хүний сайн сайхан байдлыг нэмдүүлэх ирээдүй хойч үеийнхээ авч алгалтай амьдрах нөхцөлийг бүтүүлэхийн төлөө илүү үхээр хүсэж мөрөөдөж тэмүүлж ажиллаж амьдарч байна. Өнөөдрийн Монгол улсын хөгжлийн олон саад бэрхшээлийн нэг нь өөрсдийн хийсэн ажлыг өөрсдөө хуурамчаар үнэлж өөрсдөө болж байна, хүтэж байна гэж хүлэн нүдээ амин зүтгэх хүмүүс. А тэдгээрийн толгой тогцсон амин хуваа хичээсэн үзэл санаа босоор байна. Харин үнэн зүгээр ажлаа үнэлэх алдаагаа үнэлчээр олж тогтоом хүлэн зөвшөөрч тасралтгүй суралцах замаар хүн бүр өөрчлөх ёстой гэж би боддгоо. Төрийн бодлого яагаад нийгэм эдийн засаг байгаль орчинд эргээд нөлөөлөхгүй байгаа юм бэ? Яагаад агаарын богцол замын төвжрэл авилга хийл авах бол төрийн хулгайг уурахгүй байна бэ? Яагаад эмнэлэг сургуулийн хөрцөө муу хавтрын ба бусад өвчлөлт уурахгүй байна бэ? Бид эдгээр асуудлыг шийдвэрлэх зорилгоор хэрэгжсэн бүх төсөл хөтөлбөр төлгөө бодлогыг үнэн зөв үнэж дүгнэж алдаан дээрээ суралцаж чадсан уу? Эдгээр асуудалд хариулт даваагүй. Эдгээр асуудлыг үнэн зөв тодорхойлоогүй. Эдгээр асуудлыг шийдвэрлэх гарц гаргалгаа, үйл ажиллагааг үнэн зөв хянаж, шинжилж, үнэлээгүй тохиолдолд бид цаашид ямар бодлого барих, ямар төсөл хөтөлбөр төлөвөө хэрэгжүүлэхээ мэдэхгүй. Мэдсэн ч тэр нь амьдрал нийцэхгүй асуудал жижигрэх биш харин томорсоор байх болно. Тиймээс залуучууд өөрсдийн сайн дураар дэлхийн залуу үнэлгээчдийн Монгол дахь салбарыг нэж энд зүрх сэтгэлээ зориулахаар нэгдсэн нь төвжлийн саатыг хэтлэх нэгэн том арга зам гэж би бодож байна. Залуу үнэлгээчд улам олон болох болтой дараа дараагийн үеийн хүмүүс үнэлгээний ач холбогдлыг улам ойлгодог болоосо бидний болон бидний өмнөх үеийн гаргасан алдааг татахгүй байгаасаа төвжлийн бодлого төсөл хөтөлбөр тус бүр үнэн зөвөр хянаалцдаг шинжилгэдэг үнэлгэдэг байгаасаа бид Бид л хийхгүй бол хин ч хийхгүй бид л дуурахгүй бол хин ч дуурахгүй. Та бүхэндээ бүгдэнд нь баяр хүргий. Анхаарлтай сан баярлалаа. Монгол орон үр мандам бодрох болтгүй. Okay, so now in English. I'm sorry for repeating myself again and again in different languages but um okay, good afternoon everyone. Mongolia's development rate is not growing as fast as we would like. Social frustrations are increasing every day. Our eyes and ears are constantly seeing and hearing them. And we are experiencing all of this with our own bodies. I think that the increase in social frustration is not because of the increase in social problems, but because our minds are becoming healthier, then we can, uh, then we can look back at the problems, see our mistakes, correct them and evaluate them. The young people want dream, aspire, work, live, more to correct the mistakes of our, our native country and motherland, to increase peace, morality, and human well-being, and to create happy living conditions for future generations. One of the many obstacles to the development of Mongolia today is people who falsely evaluate their, their work and they have done, uh, believe that they are succeeding and keep keeping their eyes closed and the self-centered ideas in their minds. But I think that everyone should move forward by honestly evaluating their work, honestly ident identifying and admi admitting their mistakes and continuously learning. Why do government policies give non-positive impacts on society, economy, and environment? 
why air pollution, traffic jams, corruption, and government theft are not decreasing. Why are hospitals and schools insufficient and cancer and other diseases are not decreasing? Have we been able to accurately evaluate all projects, programs, plans, and policies implemented to address these issues and learn from our mistakes? If we don't get answers to those questions, if we don't accurately define this, those problems, if we don't accurately monitor uh, analyze and evaluate solutions to those problems, issues, and activities, we don't know what policies to develop and what projects, programs, and plans to implement. Then the problems and issues will continue to grow, not to shrink. Therefore, I think that the young people voluntarily opening uh, the new branch, I would say the Evadu chapter in Mongolia and joining here to dedicate their hearts is great way, great way to break the development barriers. May there be more young evaluators. I hope that the people of the next generation will understand the importance of evaluations more. May we not repeat the mistakes made by us and our procedures. And I hope that uh, each development policy project program is accurately monitored, analyzed, and evaluated. If you don't do, do that now, no one will do it. So congratulations, congratulations to all of you and thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anzarek for your, for your inspirational speech. It was very sharp to the point, <laughs> very honest <laughs> speech. Now I would like to welcome Irtin Chinigud Disuran uh, she is a founder and president of Mongolian Evaluation Association and the CEO and founder of Cognos International LLC, uh, which is an evaluation and research company. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm so happy to see all of you uh, in person and also virtually. Uh, and uh, sorry, so sorry about some technical issues, but very appreciate your patience uh, being with us and witnessing the historic moment of uh, birth of uh, West Youth Mongolia chapter. And now I just would like to uh, give you just a couple of slides. Uh, why, uh, what's the linkage between Mongolian Evaluation Association and the Evaluate Mongolia chapter? Can you see my. <laughs> okay, so um, just a very brief uh, timeline uh, snapshot of uh, how come, uh, how this Evaluate Youth. Uh, this thing uh, landed uh, uh, from the beginning. So in 2012, Evad Partners, which is a combination of uh, UN organizations, uh, uh, national, different national, uh, 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 national evaluation associations, uh, they joined and made this group of Evad Partners in 2012. And then in 2015, the first uh, Evad Youth Global Network uh, was established. And then, uh, as Siti said, that uh, Asia chapter was established in 2019. The, um, 2019. And now, uh, Mongolia, you chapter established just uh, uh, before the 2012, 2020 ended, which is, I think it was December 23rd of uh, last year. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, and Mongolian Evaluation Association, we have a strategic plan for 2022 and uh, 2026. And one of the strategic goals is to support individual evaluators, including 
young and emerging evaluators, professional development, more specifically, uh, we uh, pointed out that we would like to create national chapter, uh, evaluate the Mongolia chapter, because Mongolia is a country of young people, and it's very important to support their capacity building, career development, networking opportunities. And I hope this picture is also self explanatory that uh, we would like to pave the uh, way uh, for our young and emerging people who are interested in this field uh, <clears throat> to, uh, to give them some support needed and to, uh, to go on this great journey of evaluation together. And uh, uh, also why why is why is the young and emerging evaluator? Many of us uh, are just using this abbreviation, right? So if we look at the membership or study of Mongolian Evaluation Association, as of today, we have 83 members and uh, uh, 13 of them are students. But if we look at the young and emerging evaluator uh, definition itself, it's almost 80% of our uh, members are young and emerging evaluators. Young meaning under 35, emerging meaning if you don't have uh, professional experience in evaluation, uh, 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 up to five years, then you are considered as emerging evaluator. So if you uh, combine that definition, 80% of our members are young and emerging evaluator. But if we look at uh, specifically the definition of age, 32, i.e. almost 40% of our members are young people. So uh, like when we uh, were developing our strategic plan, uh, we were kind of sure that, okay, we will uh, really support the young and emerging people. But now uh, after one and a half year, we are still uh, very sure that we had good strategic plans because when we look at the position of our members, most of them are young and emerging researchers. Um, I think, yes, so that's it. But if just <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, since we uh, have some uh, representation of the membership, uh, we have a really, really global membership portfolio, some from USA, some from Australia, China. And that means also uh, from other cities of Mongolia, that means we really, are open to anyone who is interested, interested in this uh, field of evaluation. And we try to minimize as many as possible barriers. Uh, otherwise, uh, even some small barrier could really hinder uh, anyone to join this field. So thank you very much for your attention. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Nchima. And also on behalf of the well, this uh, Mongolia chapter, we would like to say a massive thank you. Without MEA, it was not possible to launch this uh, chapter here. So uh, we are looking forward to collaborate with MEA and grow under MEA umbrella together uh, for the upcoming years. Now uh, we have a question and answer session. So we will cut the time to five minutes because we run, we run out of time. So I'd like to welcome the comments and any questions on the chat for uh, participating online. Also, I'd like to hear some comments or any questions for participating here at the MEA office. Maybe Dorothy or Tamara or Siti, if you have any comments or questions. We are here to answer them. Or anyone from the audience, because we have also participants who are not the Evaluate Mongolia chapter uh, founders. So we have different participants who are also here to become the member of India as well. <laughs> they're saying that they're feeling a bit reserved. <laughs> Maybe uh, they have a lot of patients uh, in mind. So, so using the time, I would like to also just share some information on what is about partners and what is about Youth Asia and what is about Value Global. 
So uh, Eval Youth Global. Uh, so during our uh, Eval Youth Asia Mongol Mongolia chapter presentation, we mentioned about Eval for Action. So Eval for Action is an international action towards SDG goals. Uh, it is partnered under UNFPA, Eval Youth and Global Parliamentarians Forum for Evaluation, and international partners, including Eval Partners, uh, which was formed by an independent organization for a cooperation and evaluation. This is the behind like story of Eval for Action. So um, this is the just uh, in between information. So now I would like to welcome here also our now I would like to also here uh, welcome our founders here uh, one by one and I would like to also hear their uh, impression and experience and story behind how what how was it launched. Maybe we can start from uh, Gimba. Uh, maybe Sona, you can share your comments here. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's me. <laughs> so, um, my background is auditing and finance, which is kind of related to evaluation, but um, in terms of like real life exper experience, I had none. But um, since my student years, I was really passionate about the uh, SDGs and other kinds of evaluation um, topics. So, um, from my early years, I was um, kind of a really analytical kind of person. And this uh, part of mine and passion of um, passion towards the SDGs really combined in the values chapter. So <clears throat> my connection and passion was connected to values Mongolia as well as um, MEA. <laughs> um, yeah. So I am really looking forward to our um, future activities as well as values um, week in April. Yeah, and I'm really happy to join this really like cool guys. <laughs> yeah, and and I'm really looking forward to learning from the global as well as in local network. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Bimba, for your uh, also story behind why you want to, why you decided to join uh, Evaluation Asia and also uh, MEA Mongolian Evaluation Association. Is there any other comments from the participants for came here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I was asked also to share why I decided also to join MEA and Evaluate Asia. Firstly, I was very happy to know that Mongolian Evaluation Association was uh, is establishing soon, and I approached uh, Mr. Finchimek uh, here over uh, almost a year ago, around a year ago, and then. Uh, it, Mr. Tinchimek explains the objectives and um, the, uh, vision of the MEA. And the, that's uh, our brief talk inspired me a lot. And then I was following up, joining the activities of MEA. And uh, I was also uh, was happy to know that also there, there were other youth that wanted to um, focus the activities toward the youth who will um, do the evaluation um, activities and projects, potential projects uh, in the evaluation sector. So th this was the uh, story 
of myself, how I joined the organization. So is there, if there are no questions, we would like to now close the session and also would like to thank a lot for the participants who joined online despite the time zone difference. Also managed your time to come from your offices and home during the cold winter time in Mongolia. And thank you very much. And thank you uh, also so much for the co-leaders and founders of the Evaldis Mongolia. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much.